until I saw this haze. They just finished burning piles up here. Well, good morning everybody. I'm on another photo trip and uh, decided to get up super early this morning and drive up into the Uintas. So I got up at uh, 3 this morning and been driving for about the past three hours or so and uh, finally made it up here. It's late fall so definitely snow up around here. It's not super deep but it's cold. It's uh, 1 right now. Yeah, the sun's just starting to work its way up. Uh, probably got about a half hour or so before we're really gonna start getting any sort of good light. It is clear. I was hoping for some clouds, but uh, it's cleared up. Anyway, I'm hoping that uh, there'll also be some animals moving. I've seen some tracks in the snow. I'm gonna get uh, the rest of my layers on here and then go try to figure out my shot. So the sun's just starting to hit the far peak over there and the surrounding mountainsides on the east. <laughs> uh, sitting in the truck, because it is really cold out there. <laughs> I was out there for a while, getting pictures as the sun worked down the mountain, and uh, yeah, just getting too cold. So I'm just sitting here waiting for the sun to get a little bit higher, and we'll see. It's really unfortunate there are no clouds. I wish I could have been out here yesterday. I'm pretty sure there was good cloud structure up in here, but I had to work. Well, it's the view if you can see through the foggy window. I decided to move a little bit and see what else I can come across, find some other pictures, whether animals or landscape, and barely started driving and spotted a moose. Ended up being a couple of moose. Got some decent pictures of them, but they were pretty far away by the time I could get the camera out and everything, so. We're not out, but on. It's warming up, it's three now definitely feel that difference. It's still really cold. <laughs> really, really cold. Anyway, we're just gonna keep rolling along here, see what we can find, because quite frankly, it is way too cold to just be out standing around, hiking and all that. So we'll see what we get. sun's getting up pretty high so the lighting is getting kind of harsh but seeing back in the trees uh, is working and honestly it's kind of cool as well if you're getting the right angles and everything kind of shoot shadows and sun uh, you get some cool contrast and just the snow is so white and the sky is so blue and everything it is still so cold. It's three degrees right now. And it takes no time at all with my hands out on the camera. And I lose all feeling in my fingers. I lose dexterity. I think I'm turning the camera on and off and my fingers just like sliding over something else. But because my hands are so cold, I can't feel the little ridge. And because I can't feel it, I can't push down into it to hook it, to open it up, or to turn it on. It's really crazy. They're really trying.
trying to get a lot of the deadfall, or dead trees, I should say, under control around here. This area of the mountains have been hit really hard by the pine beetle. And so there's just a ridiculous amount of uh, standing dead trees. And uh, there have been concerns for a while about what will happen or would happen if there were to be a fire. So they're trying to get a lot of that stuff under control. And that's where a lot of this logging comes from. So I saw this haze. They just finished burning piles up here. Wow. So what they'll do is they'll cut a bunch of the dead trees that have been killed by these pine beetles. And for those who don't know, essentially what the pine beetles will do is they bore into the tree and then uh, they'll just cut paths throughout the tree, but eventually they'll cut a path around the circumference of the tree, which just cuts off all nutrients to the upper part of the tree, and it dies. These beetles will just completely desolate these areas, and because of the fighter danger, like I said, they're, um, they're trying to get the, the dead trees out and get it under control a little bit more, and so they'll take out huge stands of trees that are dead, and then they'll pile them into these giant piles. And uh, this time of year, when the fire danger is super low, they'll come up here and they'll light them up and basically burn it to where there's nothing left. And uh, it's a pretty efficient way to get rid of all of the, the trees. I mean, there's only so much they can do with Looks like there might be moose up in there. Can't see. I didn't bring binos. Yep. There's a moose up in there. over the moose around here. There were four in that group. A bull and a cow and then a cow and a calf. And I don't know if they were actually hanging out together or if they just happened to meet up because they split and went different ways. But <laughs> I've seen oh I've seen ten moose so far. That's nuts. It's a place to come apparently this time of year if you want to see moose. Cool. Ha, there's a moose crossing the road right up there. Something crossing the road up here. I think it's a moose, but I'm not sure. There are a lot of animals out here. Well, moose anyway. We'll see what this is.
cause a moose. I don't know why there's so many in here. There's a drainage way back up in here that in the summertime will just load up with moose. And I think they're just working down in here and this is their wintering area. That's why they're all concentrated down here. I think that makes 11. I don't think I have yet to finish my explanation of the, the burning the piles. Or maybe I have, I just haven't been able to full, come full circle on the thought process. Either way, they burn them, it's good, nothing left, problem solved, done. Alright, we're up to 13. Starting to wonder if they were going to run the whole road. So the sun's up pretty high now. It's still uh, fairly early in the morning, but I'm probably going to try to find a place here I can pull off and make some breakfast because I'm hungry. It's warmed up a bunch from what it was. We're at uh, 21 right now, which feels pretty warm compared to this morning. There were a few spots I got out this morning that were just absolutely brutal. Because it was like, I don't know, three degrees and then there was wind pulling down a canyon. Probably 15 mile an hour wind, 10, 15 mile an hour wind at three degrees. Whoa. Kind of a cool little thing here. Somebody uh, put a flag on a post out here. It's pretty cool. I'm gonna get some pictures of it. I can barely see it. it's so bright out here. Oh my word. Cool. That would have been cool at first light. All right, that wraps it up for the mountain activities. I'm on the way back. It's uh, getting close to noon, so I'll figure I probably ought to start heading home. So anyway, we'll see you back in the editing land. Welcome back to the office. Uh, first off, I want to say thank you for watching, especially if you watched to this point in the video. Uh, please consider liking, subscribing, hitting that notification bell. It helps me out. I'm going to run through some of the photos that I took and kind of talk about them briefly. 
Uh, if you watched my last video, uh, one of the things that I struggled with on the moose in particular was really high ISO. And so coming out of that trip, going into this one, that was something I was very much aware of and watching closely. So I really watched that ISO to make sure it wasn't going super high and you'll see the results of that. However, I was not watching my shutter speed. And so in several of the photos, especially the moose where I was not on a tripod or resting on the car, uh, I had too slow of shutter speed and I was getting some motion blur, which is unfortunate, but uh, you learn from that. So uh, in hindsight, I think in this in particular, I should have done a faster shutter speed or well, probably and rested on the car on the photos of the moose. And really uh, the ISO could have gone higher and I still would not have been dealing with any sort of significant noise in the photos. The, Nikon Z62 does pretty well with uh, relatively high ISO. It can tolerate quite a bit and not get super noisy. So should have done that, should have been paying more attention to that. Uh, hopefully you don't make the same mistakes that I did and you can learn from me. Uh, but there's a lot to watch, especially when you're doing wildlife photography. There's a lot of things that are happening all at once and sometimes it's happening very quickly and remembering to check your ISO and your aperture and your shutter speed and getting your framing right and uh, composition and waiting for that perfect moment for when the animal looks up or does something that you're wanting to capture. Keeping all that in your mind can be tricky. And it got me on this one. So uh, definitely learn from that and I am implementing that going forward and getting more familiar and, and kind of working through a process for myself mentally so that I uh, don't fall subject to that anymore. But either way, fun trip nonetheless definitely be more trips coming up on this channel so uh, if you like this stay tuned and uh, again thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one